Hi, everybody. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are going to be doing another tutorial. I'm just trying to pull something up here because I was having a little bit of a hard time uh, with some of the comments. So I'm just pulling this up and my sound is off, but I should be able to see um, comments. So anyway, uh, welcome. Today we're going to be using the iron on method of decoupage and I'm going to bring up my project because we're just going to get right into it. Okay. Um, on my page this morning, I shared with you that I had some transfers that had lifted. And if I had caught it soon enough, I would have been able to, um, you know, just re-adhere those bits. Um, but I didn't catch it in time. Um, and even worse, it was at the shop. So that was not, that was not good. Um, but anyway, brought it home and I showed you how to use just a heat gun to remove the transfer. So after I did that, I went ahead and sanded it. I, I do have a little discoloration, but because we're going to be using the decoupage paper, um, I'm not worried about that. To get started, I've already prepped this and I want to share with you what I've done. I applied three thin coats of, well, two of them were kind of generous, but I applied three coats of my decoupage medium to both sides of the board. We're going to be decoupaging both sides today. And then I allowed each coat to dry in between. And I'm doing this because the iron on method really does help with wrinkles. And I know that the wrinkles are really concerning to some of you. And so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I'm always using the liquid decoupage method. And I thought, Let's iron on something and uh, see how we do. So if you pop on here today, I would really appreciate it if you would say hello. Uh, let me know um, what city you're watching from and what page you're watching from. Um, I'd really appreciate that. It's always fun to see um, where everybody is, is tuning in from. So let's get started. You know, no, no, how much I love, love, love. <laughs> Can I just emphasize that even a little bit more? So um, I love that ephemeral burlap paper. And so last week we used it to do the uh, magnetic memo board. But this week we're going to use it for this iron on decoupage um, piece. And I'm going to show you that it doesn't quite go all the way to the top. So we're going to do a little bit of piecing together. And then um, we're also going to do the other side. So I thought I would use both pieces of this paper. And um, hello, Sheila. Thank you so much uh, from Tennessee. So we are going to use both sides of this paper. We'll do one side with the black and one side with the um, the white text. And that way I thought it's nice for anybody who, you know, prefers one or the other, or maybe they want to switch it out a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and cut our paper. I'm just going to cut this. My scissors are giving me the business today. Hold on one second. And I will have plenty of paper, but this will be a good way to... Uh, show you how you can piece something if you don't if it's not quite large enough it's not a problem we're just going to cut this in half I'm not being too precious with it okay and so why don't we go ahead and start with the light one since we used the um the dark one last week we'll go ahead and start with this one so what I want to do is I want to get a sense of where I want this I'm going to kind of go to the edge here and I kind of want to go straight. So I'm going to turn this this way just so that I can position this the way I want it. Okay. And I also want to, do I have some water? I've got a, I'm going to sacrifice a bottle of water because I didn't grab my water thinking, but I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and do a little bit of a wet tear on the top up here. Because when we do a little bit of a wet cutting, it doesn't look as much like a seam when we go to piece things together. So that is, Debbie, if you're watching, we kind of messaged about that this morning. She is decoupaging a uh, trash can and was asking about wet cutting. So it's super easy. You just use a little bit of water and then you can use your fingernails. This is pretty close up. I'm not wanting to go too, too far down into my design, but you'll see how this allows us to um, hide our seams a little bit better. And it just, it just looks more cohesive 
it's not obvious where you pieced anything together when you use this method. So it's just water and a little artist brush. And then I'm just tearing along the edge here. I'm really glad I remembered to do this before we got started. Um, actually laying down the decoupage paper. Okay. So now I've got that and I have this rough edge. You can see how it's um, just kind of, you know, up there. So I'm going to go ahead and see where I want my design. The wreath is going to kind of come away from it and I want it to be down here. And I think I'm just going to do it just like this and then we're going to see where we go. Okay. So you always want a barrier when you're using an iron. I'm going to be using a little craft iron and I've got it heat. Oh, it went off because I wasn't using it. I had it heated up. So it's going to heat up there for a little bit. If you're using a household iron, you want to make sure that it has no water in it and you can set it on the highest setting. Um, but you always want a barrier between your paper and your iron. So you could use parchment paper um, or something like that. I'm going to be using a Teflon sheet. I actually think I'm allergic to these Teflon sheets, uh, so I'm not going to get, I'm not going to keep it on here too, too long. I always seem to have a problem with my skin after I use them for a really long time. But anyway, they work really well for a lot of people. So this is heated up now. I have it, it's got the three lights, so I have it on the highest setting. This one doesn't actually allow you to steam, so um, it's perfect. It's just a dry iron and it's small. So I'm gonna set my Teflon sheet down and I'm gonna work in kind of small sections. And again, what this is doing is just reactivating the, um, the varnish or your decoupage medium. And now it's acting as a glue. And I'm going to glide this over. I'm gonna go all over and I can hear it kind of attaching a little bit. So we're gonna go up in here. I don't wanna to stay too, too, too long in one place. Um, I'm just kind of moving this along here. Hi, Lori. Hi, Sandy. So I was very, very glad to be able to reuse this board. I would have hated to have to toss it or scrap it. There's always a way, almost always a way to salvage something. So I was really glad I was able to remove those transfers from this board. Now, when you're applying your decoupage medium, again, you want to use about three coats, letting each coat dry in between. Excuse me. <coughs> um, uh, what was I going to say? When you apply that, you just want to make sure that you're getting even coats, as even as you possibly can. I'll show you the brush that I use to apply mine because it doesn't hold too, too much. And I'm just kind of going over and then I'm gonna lift this up and see how we're doing. You wanna make sure that you get your edges well too. And if you miss an edge, it's not a big deal because after we decoupaged uh, this with the iron, we can always go around and use our liquid medium to secure those if we need to. Let me get up here on the corners. This iron is super, super hot but I love it. It's tiny, doesn't take up too much room. It's not heavy. Okay, let's give it a look and see how we're doing with this. I can see where it's stuck. See how that's ironed on? It feels so good. There are no wrinkles at all on this, but I wanna see if my corners are done. If I've got any lifting over here in this corner, I did well. And in this corner here, I'm doing well. It doesn't seem like I have any lifting. So that's brilliant. And now what I want to do is I'm going to cut a little bit. We're going to have to address the handle of our, oop, I'm going to end up spilling that water. Give me one second. Okay, now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to address this piece. And I can see where this particular piece is not stuck down. So I'm going to go ahead and lay my Teflon sheet here. And we're going to get that in place too. 
and then we'll just layer on top of that. We'll decide, you know, how, what we want to layer on that. Um, the iron is a little craft iron, Sandy, and um, I have this and some other items in my Amazon shop, and I am not able to just say, hey, hashtag, and it'll take you to my Amazon shop. So, but I, I can link it. I'll share the link in the comments to the Amazon shop. It's got, I've started um, just adding the products based on the lives, but there are some favorite things in there and it's, it's really not expensive. And I've had this iron for a couple of years now. It still just works great. I use it for a variety of things. So I just like that it's small and it's, it's got a nice handle to it like this. So it's easy to grab. And so let's see if that is down. It is. Okay. And I've pretty much stretched my paper right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of cut right here and give that a little bit of a, give it just a little bit of relief here. And then I'm going to just take off some of this excess paper around. I think I'm coming out of camera. So I'm taking some of my excess paper off. Okay, and then we'll choose from that on how we're going to, I've got a little more over here. So I think we'll go on this side as well. And I'm just gonna come, I'm gonna leave a little bit that I can sand off. But we'll go ahead and choose from the scraps that we have that we've cut off. And then I'll show you how we will, I'm going to kind of, I don't know, I don't necessarily want the white, but I do kind of like this. It doesn't blend completely with that, but I still think it's going to be okay. And the the reason I think it's going to be okay is because we are um, going to be blending this in anyway. So I think it's going to be fine. I'm just going to go right from there. I'm not even going to worry about really kind of color matching it. I don't have a piece from here that's quite as this might be a little bit better you're going to kind of miss the text on that this might be a little bit better mm, i don't know i'm going to just go ahead and go with this let's just go with this so i'm going to go ahead and take a piece and using my brush again i'm going to wet cut all of the edges here i'm going to need more water I've got to remember not to drink that water since I've been putting a paintbrush in it. So if you see me go to drink that water, say something if you can. <laughs> I wish there was like an, a, a sound that you could make or something like that. Hi, Shannon. Oh, thank you, Shannon. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay. So again, you just use, if you're going really close to the edge, just use your fingernails or something like that and tear it away just pull it we just don't want a straight edge because it just sticks out like a sore thumb when you do that and so we're going to go on this edge as well okay here and so the other side will have the black text from this and i kind of like the idea as i said that they you know it you can choose which side you want to um, serve on or display and you can change it out. Maybe the, I don't know, I guess you could even do it seasonally, right? You could use the, um, uh, maybe the lighter side for spring and summer. And as you get into winter, turn it to the black side. I don't know that you need to be that, that fussy about it. But anyway, so this side is going to be big enough right here. And I'm just going to overlay that. You are going to see a little bit of that. So now I'm kind of rethinking. That might be a little too much. I did not do what I said I wanted to do. Is that, this is a little, okay. This is a little less obvious and it's big enough that I can just go right here and not worry about it. So you are going to see a little bit, but I think there's a way that we can blend this in even a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and get my Teflon sheet and my iron is still, let me make sure I didn't move that too much. I'm not wetting cut, wet cutting that edge 
because it's larger than my handle. And so I'll be able to sand that off. So you don't always have to do that. And um, let's see, let's do this. So I've got my Teflon sheet and Yes, Shannon, it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. Okay, so it's starting to go off. It'll beep when it's going to start to go off. So you've got a minute to go ahead and um, take care of that. I'm going to move my Teflon sheet just over so I'm not going right on my paper. And I just want to make sure that I've got that ironed in. It's lifting anywhere just right there a little bit. So I'm going to, and that might be where I overlapped it and I might have to put a little bit of medium in there, but let's see. I think we're gonna be good now. Okay, so now what we've got is, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this little bit off here so you can see a little bit better and we'll put this out of the way. Okay, and now is this lifting? Nope. It, it actually is stuck too. So you'll be able to tell if you have any lifting or if you've missed a spot or anything like that. But you can see here that as I'm going around, it's in place. And so the next thing is to go ahead and let's remove this excess paper. I always like to sand in a downward motion. Um, that way I'm not ripping my paper. I'm gonna try to have this not make as much noise as it usually does. But And I remembered a fresh sanding block. So that was really great. And we're gonna go on all sides. I love that you can do something double-sided with this particular paper. Again, it's the ephemeral burlap paper. And I just, I, I adore it. I've done, gosh, we did a wallpaper, or we did a wall pocket with it. We did the, um, the memo board last week, and now we're doing charcuterie boards. And when I make the charcuterie boards, I make them uh, food safe so that you can serve on them. You never ever wanna throw something that, you know, um, the surface is wood. You never wanna throw that in your dishwasher, but, they are washable with like a, you know, a damp soapy rag. And then we're gonna address the hole. So I'm just kind of coming in here. A nail file is actually really nice to use in these little corners, but I'm gonna see what I can do here. This is small enough that I'm able to get over there. So we, I love that. Do you love that? I think it's really pretty. So we're gonna do a couple of things to blend this in. I'll have to grab a little, a little product. I'm gonna set these scraps aside. So let's talk about the little hole that's right here. Um, I am actually going to turn this over and I am going to put a little bit of medium and I'm going to kind of use my brush and I'm going to take this and on the back side, we'll have to do this for both sides. I am going to come in here and basically just use it like a glue in here, just like this. Okay. And now I'm going to wipe the excess so it doesn't stick to my table. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to use my brush, my paintbrush and poke that down into the hole. And I'm going to go around the edge, just like this, and pop that in. And so now we've taken care of our hole and the paper is secured inside there, okay? So this side's ready to go. And before we do anything else, we're gonna go ahead and decoupage that other side. So we will follow the same steps. I've just glued some paper to, I knew that was gonna happen. I hope I haven't ruined it right there. Um, but let's go ahead and we'll do the same thing here. Go ahead and get this done. And I wanna go ahead and again, wet cut my top and I won't have to do the whole thing, but let's go ahead and just, we just run a bead of water with our brush. 
and get that going. It can dry out a little quickly, so don't be too concerned if you have to do it a couple of times. You just want to make sure that you're able to, again, wet tear it. It's much easier when you're doing strips than when you're just trying to take off a very small piece of the edge. Oh, this one's a little more stubborn. There we go. It's a little wetter up here. I don't want to wet all my medium. So we'll do this. Okay, and I, I think I've torn up, torn enough off. Okay, so this is wet right here. That wasn't like my most brilliant idea, but I'm just gonna wet it like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and now we're going to center. I'm just gonna, this time, I'm gonna have to turn it this way and let's get this centered. Okay. I'm going to kind of see where I want this. I'm gonna come up here and we're going to, mm, I really love that little floor thing, but I want this to be up here too. So I'm going to just come up a little bit and we'll still have that bit up there. And hopefully this is straight, yep, okay. So I have this in place and again, we're going to put our barrier and you, again, don't forget, you can just use parchment paper if you want to. This is just something, the Teflon sheet is something that you can use over and over again. And it works as a great barrier. And again, I'm just going, oops, it turned off. So it's still a little warm though. So we'll just keep going with it while we're doing this. Okay, Sandy, I hope I said hello to you and Lori to you. And I think it's Angela. Angela, hi, welcome. Okay. Okay. Let's do, we're going around. I'm just making sure I go to my edge and just kind of now, if you were working on a bigger project, you could just move your Teflon sheet around, but this works out really well because my Teflon sheet covers the whole thing. Hi, Connor. Are you going to come say hi to the people? Do you want to say hi? Hi, we're ironing, we're decoupaging. I don't know if you can see him, but um, our gunner just walked in. He wants to check it out. Yeah, you want to check it out and see what's going on. What am I doing again? Huh? What is she doing again? Oh, God bless you. God bless you, Gunner. Okay, let's see. Um, all right. I think I can feel it. All right. It is still heating up. So I'm just going to let this heat up one second. I'll see if you want to see um, Gunner real quick. Gunner, come say hello. Say hi to the people. Say hi to the people. Come back so they can see you. So they can see your pretty face. No? Okay. He's not, he's not having it. I thought it was worth a try though. So, um, okay, here we go. So let's do um, this. Hi, Tina. How are you? All right. So let's do here. We're going to, Gunnar, you can hang out. It's okay. What are you doing? Okay. You want to decoupage? Hmm? Do you want to decoupage? I know mommy's always making something. Okay. So we're going to, I think I'm getting there, but I just want to make sure that I've gone over all of my areas. So we'll lift this up and check out where we are. If it's lifting anywhere that I need to go around, I've got a little spot up there, but it's, it's secure. So you can see that it's right there. So I'm just going to turn this this way so that we can do this. And, um, oh, Shannon, you would love Gunner. He's, he's, aren't you fabulous? Yes, he's fabulous. Yes, are you smiling? You won't get on camera though. I think they'd love to see you if you get on camera. You wanna give it a try? You wanna try? Hmm? No? He's a little camera shy today, which is shocking. Okay, um, all right, so we've done that and now just the same thing, except now I think I do wanna use that piece that I decided I wasn't going to use and now I've lost it unless it's here. 
Okay, nope, it's here. So this one works really well. And I think I'll just use this scrap from here. I just want to make sure. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. What are you doing? You're so good. You're the best boy. Okay, you're so good. You're so good. Okay, sorry, guys. <laughs> I can't help it. All right, so I'm going to put my Teflon sheet and we're going to be able to use that little scrap after all. And we'll put this down. I don't want you to get near the hot iron gunner. Okay, no hot irons. That would not be good, my friend. Okay, let's do this. You can lay down if you want. You want to sit, sit in here while I finish? Okay, here we go. And I think I've got that. So this is basically what we did before, but I just had that little bit and it just fits. So that's really nice. Love that. And let's do, we're going to cut off our edges. It just gives the, now you want to be in the picture, right? You want to be in the picture? You want to be in the picture now? You're so funny. You're so funny. What am I doing? Okay, let's do... Okay, we're just going to cut these edges, then we'll sand off, and then we'll go to the next step, okay? Um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> He's like, oh. We got Gunner. Um, how long? When When did we get you, Gunner? When did you, when did you come home? It was, gosh, I don't know, four years ago, maybe? Four, I think about four years that we've had him, and uh, we got him from a rescue organization, and um, he's just, oh my gosh, he's just, he's a love. He really is. I wouldn't trust my personal um, safety to him. Like, I don't think he's much of a protection dog. Stan thinks he would. Um, but then the mom in me says I would never want him to be in that kind of position anyway. So anyway, long story short, um, he's all love and uh, he's just darling. So, okay. Let's go ahead and sand this off. Yep, I'm sanding. You usually don't like this car. So if only he could help, though, that would be really nice. Yeah. Can you help? Can you help? You are really all up in it today. You are really interested today, aren't you? Okay. All right. Let's get this off here. I'll turn it on the other side. Then we're almost done. And I'll show you how we're going to blend that in. I'm going to have to just grab one product. Ugh. The banging is what I wish I could avoid. But look how it just, oh, once you sand the, the edges off and you see the whole thing come together, it's just brilliant. It is just brilliant. Okay. So we're going to do a couple of things. I'm not really crazy about the white sides uh, for this particular design. So we'll address those. And then we're also just going to blend in a little bit more where the paper came in. Okay. I guess he's all done. He's all done creating you guys. So he lost interest. Okay. But he has been, Gunner has been just, uh, he's just, he's awesome. He's awesome with our sons. He's just, um, he loves kids and other dogs and people. And he's just, he's just such a love. So now we have this side, which I love. And then we have this side, which I also love. And so I think it just, um, is so, so, so pretty. So let's address the hole. And for this one, it's going to be a little bit different because I already have, um, I already have a little glue in there. So I am going to come on the back side and use a little bit more of my medium to act as a glue. I'm just rubbing it around, making sure I get it in the sides and then pushing this paper down into that and then just kind of using the handle of my brush to go around all the edges and push that paper in so that I make sure that it is secure and not sticking out anywhere. And so now our hole is crisp and clean on both sides, right? And so I'm sorry, uh, 
No, uh, Shannon, this is both designs are from one paper. It's the ephemeral burlap. Um, and it's by Roy Cycle Treasures. And so that's one of the things that I absolutely adore about the paper is that you can get two designs out of one. So before, while I get a product, and this is going to need to dry a little bit anyway, and I don't need my iron now, here's where you're going to freak out. <laughs> I hope you can see right now that this is completely wrinkle-free, right? Completely wrinkle-free. Now, one of the things that will... Um, be the first thing that you say when you're trying this technique is that it's going to drive you crazy because what's going to happen is that when I apply, I need to seal this. And so I am using a food safe sealer. This is called Triple Teak. Um, and I do have it on my website, but this is Triple Teak and I'll put several coats. But when we apply the sealer, it is likely that you are going to see bubbles and then you're going to be like, what the heck happened it was it was just perfect there were no wrinkles and i just need to say just just trust that those wrinkles when your medium dries it is going to work itself out and you will not have wrinkles but you are likely going to see some wrinkles when you apply your top coat so don't freak out as we are applying our top coat now this is um an epoxy alternative, but it is food safe. It comes in several different sheens. I'm using that. So you can see that it's starting to bubble right there. And I am not worried about it at all. Okay. I'm going to put my top coat on. Um, I do have a little piece right there that I think I didn't get with my iron and that's okay. I can take care of that a little bit later when this dries, but, um, it is like three coats in one, but I still do um, three to four coats on something that I want to serve on. Typically, I will do four. I can't put this in the dishwasher, but I can use a um, like a Dawn dish soap, you know, a damp rag, dishy, dish soap, cloth. Ugh, I can't talk today, you guys. So I can use something like that and wipe it down dry. And... Uh, you know, clean it that way. And then, you know, with a clean one with no soap and that kind of thing. So it's kind of like your wooden spoons or something where you want to hand wash them, but I never immerse a wood board in, in water. So I'm going to just kind of smooth this out here and it's, it's wrinkled up again. But when I show you the picture tomorrow, you're going to see that it doesn't have any wrinkles. And so you just really you guys, okay, just for emphasis, just walk away, walk away, trust the process. It's going to be okay. All right. So I'm off my little soapbox and um, back to our project. So I am going to use, I would typically just let this dry on its own, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and dry this up. I don't, I want to let it, mm, I'm not actually, I am going to do what I say and I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, dry on its own and work itself out. And then it's going to be fine, but you'll see that we've got this, but I also wanted to do the sides. So I think what we will do is, oh, will I be okay? I think I'll be okay. I'll go ahead and just throw my iron over it again if I need to. All right. We'll, we'll go ahead. It'll be all right. But I do have quite a few wrinkles. If you let it dry overnight, you know, on its own, then the paper is stretching itself out. It's just working itself out. So, but I can see that they're starting to work, a, work themselves out, but the heat is going to reactivate my glue. So I might have to do a little bit more ironing here since we're doing it for a live. But if you can just walk away and let it dry overnight. But I do want to show you kind of the next steps. And I am going to have to throw my iron over this again. It's pretty fast. It's a beautiful pattern. And I don't see any other questions. I'm just making sure that I don't have... Um, 
Oh, your cat. Yes, yes, Shannon, they do. I mean, I think we we know what, I mean, they're just, they're just fabulous. And I know he thinks I'm crazy all the time. The only thing he doesn't like is when I can't let him um, in here when I'm top coding furniture um, because, uh, you know, he's a lab and I'm, you know, I'm constantly, I, I vacuum before I do all of that and everything. So this didn't work out just as great because um, I needed to let it go on its own. So I'm going to try this and see. I typically just let them go. I may just be pressing my wrinkles. I may have just ruined this, but I really want to show you the next steps. Let's see what I've done. Oh, it's working. So that's good might not be as perfect as if I had left it on its own to do its thing, but let me see. Yeah, we're working them out. They'll be pretty good. They'll be pretty good. I may have just creased the wrinkles. So the black side might turn out better <laughs> than this side, but that's okay. All right. So I do, I can still see a few in here because I didn't let it just dry naturally on its own. Um, but that's okay. We're going to be okay. I want to show you, I'm going to grab something really quick. So just bear with me one second. So sorry. Um, let's get the if I can find it. Uh, yeah, I got it. Okay. And I need a glove. I'm here guys. I'm just grabbing something. Sorry. And, and then a little t-shirt. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so what I want to go ahead and do, I do have one coat of sealer on here. So sorry for that, you guys. I'm so sorry. And so what I'm going to be using is a little bit of a gel stain. And this is going to deepen the color, but it's also going to blend in areas. And I want to use a glove for this because um, it's a stain. And so I don't want to stain my hand today. I usually... I'm constantly covered in paint and that type of thing. And then I just want to tear a little bit of this t-shirt and I'll apply it with that. And it's going to wrinkle it some more. <laughs> so that's okay. We'll set this aside. That's more than I need, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and fold it up and apply this. I'm just getting a little on my rag and I'm going to go directly onto my paper and I'm going to do one side so that you can see the difference and then I'll do the other side. And this happens to be an English walnut gel stain. I also um, have that so you can see the difference. It's not, it's not, um, you know, a, a huge contrast, um, but it does give it just a lovely, just a lovely color. And it blends in those torn edges a little bit better if you've had to piece paper together. And so I do this a lot on tabletops and that type of thing. And I really, really love it. It just antiques it a little bit more. And then this will dry and I will seal it again with the same sealer that I'm using. And so now we've just got this and if it's, if I need to add a little bit more where I stopped and it got a little streaky, you have a little working time and I'm just going in a circular motion and staining that up. But I think it's got a really beautiful, um, uh, uh, just a really pretty little extra touch. Okay, so the final thing that I want to address and I'm gonna go ahead and do it and even though the other side isn't complete is I wanna address the sides. Of this. I'm going to quickly just dry this a little bit so I don't get my fingers stuck in it. Hi, Teresa. How are you? And so we're going here. Just going to dry that a little bit so it's not sticky while I'm turning it around. Just get that a little drier. It's just, oh, I. I'm in love with this paper. I swear, I'm going to take 
a couple of them, I decided I'm going to find the right frame and I'm just going to decoupage it to canvas or something like that and, and go from there. So I thought about the color that I wanted to use on this. And so what I decided to do was that I'm going to use Wise Owl's uh, metallic bronze. And then I'm also going to run some stain over that. And so that will kind of soften it a little bit. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here. Is this the one that's open? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So it's just this beautiful, beautiful metallic bronze. It doesn't normally need to be sealed, but on a project like this, we're sealing everything because we want to be able to serve on it if we can. And I am, I'm hoping that you can see this. Um, I am just going to take my brush and I'm going in a motion like this. And this will take a couple of coats because I'm going over white and I painted the entire board white so that my decoupage paper would pop. If I go a little bit over onto the paper, I think that's okay because it just gives a little bit of an edge to that. And so we're gonna go ahead and get um, actually, let's do the short side because that'll be faster and I can show you what we're doing. Okay. Let me know if you can't see this and I will adjust as I can. So I'm taking just a small artist brush and we're going along here. Okay. And I want to be a little smooth with it. I love this this uh, paint. It's, it's super, super pretty. It's great on metal and on this, but I just don't want the white edges, especially since I've got the black paper on the other side. Okay. So I just use my fingers and go around here. That way I'm kind of blending it in and we're going to dry that really quick, put a second coat on it, and then we're going to stain that as well. And then you can see what I mean, how it will antique it. I think it's pretty as is. But I feel like um, antiquing even the metallic paint uh, aesthetically looks better with this paper. I could be wrong. We'll find out together if I am or if we like it. So it's not a step you have to do. It's always hard uh, to know when to stop in a project, but you step back and you see what you think and there you go. All right, I'm going to see. This takes a little bit longer to dry, but I think we can do one more coat. <coughs> we'll do this part. Yep. So that's helping right there. Maybe a little wet, and then I can do the other sides and finish this project off for us. Um, before. So you can see how pretty that is. The coverage is really good. That's two coats over white, uh, which is um, pretty cool. And so we'll go ahead and dry that. And then I'm just going to antique that also with just a little bit of that stain. Except I, oh no, good. I didn't throw away my glove. I think sometimes just the little finishing touches on something makes all the difference. And so your edges, or sometimes it's just like making sure the back of something is finished. That makes a big difference. Okay. And it's a little sticky, but let's just go for it. Okay. I'm being all kinds of brave today, you guys, just so I can show you the steps. I didn't want to have to, um, you know, do a, uh, like the part two uh, for this project, because it's not really that necessary. I also want to show you that as this, these wrinkles are really working themselves out. So I'm super pleased. I was a little nervous. I think I'm going to have a couple because I didn't let it, you know, dry on its own, but it's already um, smoother than it was when I first applied. And even after I ran the iron over it again. So I'm super happy with that. I'm trying to get my fingers in why can you never get a glove on easily after you've taken it off? I don't know why. If anybody knows that, let me know. All right. So we're going to take a little bit more of our gel stain again, just a little bit. And I'm just going to use a finger. So here it is now. It's pretty. It's really, really pretty. And I'm going to dip in here because I think that's a little bit more mixed up. But now I'm just going to 
run this over. I should have just done half so you could see. And we're just darkening it a little bit and just kind of antiquing so that it's like just an antique-y. It's just a little, okay, I'm gonna come a little heavier in here so that maybe you can see the difference even though I've already gone over there. So if you can see, I've already done the coat, but you can see how it's just, it just softens it. And it's just like an antique gilding. Let's just call that a term, okay? I'm not sure if it is a term, but that's that's what we're gonna say that it is. Okay. All right. And so I love that. So I'll be doing um, all of these steps on both sides. And I will share a picture tomorrow um, of the finished uh, project, but we'll just look at both sides again because I just I want you to love this paper as much as oh I just stuck my fingers in there so don't do that okay <laughs> so we've got this side and then we have this side and we're starting to do our edges and we've used the gel stain and I think it's going to be really really pretty so anyway um let's see if anybody's still here thank you uh for hanging in there with me and um uh yeah, so that's it. So um, again, the Food Safe Sealer, I'll link, uh, I'll share in the comments uh, the, the products that I used and all of that. Thank you so much for joining me for another week. I so appreciate um, your uh, being here to create with. I really, really appreciate it and look forward to seeing you all here. So thank you um, wherever you are. I hope you're doing well and um, I will see you soon. All right, everybody, take care. Have a great night. Bye-bye.